Hey everyone, it's me, the Lucky Feet Reviewer, and I am sorry for this taking a lot longer. I just haven't had a guy in time to record, but here we are. So, the next master on our list, Dan Blackmore and Robin Hood. Now, I'm going to go over Robin Hood first, because there's not a lot to say here. Because he's just, he's, he's become a widely known character, essentially. Mostly, I'll just be, like, if you, you're you into Fate and you at least play a bit of Grand Order, then you know who this guy is. If you play, if you've, like, dealt with the Seraphix event, or at least the rerun that just recently came, or the Summon 3 event that's about to come up, well, the Summon 3 rerun event that's about to come up, you know this guy. You know what he is, I don't need to describe how he is, I'm just going to talk about how, how he basically functions in the game, and then we're going to cover Dan. Because Dan is an underrated mage, I'll tell you that. I wish we got more of him. Because I'm going to bring some stuff up that is not on the wiki. That should be on the wiki. Because there was some stuff in the extra material that kind of says a lot about him. And it's not in the, his actual wiki file. And I think that's a disgrace. So, starting us off, Robin Hood. Essentially, this is where things start to get real. Senji was basically more or less a cakewalk outside of a few things. Robin Hood is basically how where things began to take, get, get serious. First day of the week, he literally creates a poison field upon the entire arena. In dungeon, and effectively, the only way you can basically deal with it is by getting rid of a a yew tree that's spewing a poison. Also, I think he's the only real mass, the only real servant that directly actually goes after the Hakano. Yeah, no, I think, like, outside of, like, another one, like, so outside of the next character I'll be talking about, he's the only one that actually, like, kind of threatens Hawkeye in the sense of they get threatened themselves, not the servant. Because, Ramen here, basically poison ox and po poisons Hawkeye. And, of course, this basically ends up getting him, getting Dan to basically use commands to force Robin to not do that stuff anymore. And from there, it's Kind of basically nothing else happens. You fight them like one more time before the end, and then you fight them during the second end of the second round. And yeah, like I said, basically, if you know him, you are. If you know him from other stuff, then you're basically gonna be essentially saying what's the early essence of him. He also reappears at CCC as basically a servant of BB. Ends up helping against Passion Lip. Think he gets poisoned by Melt, and eventually he decides before he goes out, he at least wants to fight Hawkeye one more time. At least, you know, he's dying. At least he wants to go down fighting rather than just, you know, let the poison Melt injected into him. Something I think he got poisoned basically. I don't know if it's Melt, but I think it probably Melt. Melt or BB. One, one of the two basically poisoned him, and basically he was like, "Well, this is the enemy. Might as well go out fighting." And that's basically it. He does come back in Excella Link, but the less we talk about Excella Link, the better, to, truth be honest. Now, again, like I said, I would talk about more about him if it wasn't for the fact that he's basically... He's known. Like, unlike Vlad, who just played, appeared in that, as a guard during that one Elizabeth, one Halloween event... Robin is like, he's he's like he he has gotten like a lot of characterization. He he was in Salem, he got Seraphix, he got Summer Summer Three. He's gotten a lot. Oh, and America, he got he 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 got two singularities. Well, two singularity and actual singularity, but he got two. Let's just let that sink in. He's gotten two. He's gotten a lot of screen time for a character that is apparently really weak. Outside of his amazing abilities, just like traps and stuff, 
Like, in terms of actual combat, he sucks. In terms of trap and stuffs, he's amazing. Unfortunately, he got paired with a, with a master that basically saw this as their last fight and wanted to at least, you know, fight as a knight. And that where, that's where we come towards Dan. Now, again, like I said, Wiki does not do this guy justice. Because, here's the thing. You hear Dan Blackmore. You, have, you hear the name Blackmore and you think, wait, as in the Gravekeeper guys? No, it's not 100% confirmed, but in the material books, it's very much implied because it's basically stated, and I quote, Dan comes from an old family and his body possesses magic circuits. I'm not saying it fits, but I'm just saying it fits because he has the white hair, he has the green eyes, he has basically the signature freaking black wool look. At least of uh, similar looking black wool compared to the other black wool we know of. That's all I'm saying. But it, Apparently, he basically didn't like the idea of his basically being a mage, so he basically abandoned that and pursued a life as a soldier. And eventually was knighted, became, was knighted by the Queen of England. And when basically, once, you know, Leo and the others, once Hawaii's basically announced, had access to the moon cell, and they were going to join the Holy Grail War, he was basically sent, so not only... No younger generations, no younger people had to be die, but he was basically the best bet, given circumstances. And you know, and he always viewed this as basically his final. You know, essentially this is what he could like. He was either this or you know, retirement. He was like, and he basically fi fought, figured that this might be the one last chance he got a chance to actually you know, fight as a knight after living, basically having gone through the horrors of war. And, ultimately, like, again, he basically doesn't like the idea of what Robin does. Like, Robin is a very much a traps and tactics kind of guy, and that's something Ro Dan did not view. And he's ultimately the guy that basically kind of pushes Hakuno to pursue the war and basically try to find meaning through it. And I like it. Now, again, he's kind of like... From early on, he's kind of one of the closest, like, he's sort of a mentor figure to Hakuno. And he ends up being, like, a mentor figure to Hakuno. And you probably don't think this much, this much is, you know, much a thing on. It's like, oh, old man, mentor stuff, you know, that kind of thing. Here's the thing. One odd thing I found. This is something that's actually on the wiki. One odd thing about Dan is that among his likes are two things. Gardening and Japanese dance. Now, that's a really odd thing for a guy that's from England, that is a knight of England, to like. And this is where we come into discussing his wife, his dead wife, that's basically what he... Basically, his wa excuse me, his wife and what he's basically was, was complexion for the war was. He came to the gr to the, the Holy Grail War fighting for England, but ultimately, you know, there was that lingering thought in the back of his mind that if the Holy Grail was real, this might be his one chance to get back his his dead wife. And that's what ultimately he believes was like, bleed was basically his downfall, his complexion between fighting for his country and his honor as a knight, or fighting for what he wanted. And hence, hence why the whole mentality of trying to tell tell Hakuno to find purpose in life and honor the dead by continuing to fight. Figure, he essentially fight for those that have fallen, fight, fight for something that's worth fighting for, essentially. But... I find that, I when I first saw that, I thought that I was like, okay, that's an odd thing. Like, that's a really odd thing to bring up. Like, why is it Japanese dancing amongst the two things he likes? Why put that, of all things? Well, 
you won't mind, give me a sec. Um, getting some images here. Again, sorry, I should probably have this ready by the time, like, start this, but eh. I guess I won't really think about it. Let's see, image. Basically, gain some image, again. Like, for the longest time, I was like, thinking, like, okay, what is with Anna? Anna and, like, this whole thing with her? And, like, did the whole thing connect to that? And then I basically start putting the pieces together. And this is a theory. No, I'm not making the, the, the meme joke. This is just, you know, theory. But, uh, let me just get the three images here. Again, I'm sorry, I should have had this in before I start recording, but eh, I didn't think too far ahead. And, yes, you can hear his base wife's name is Anne. Okay, so, so let's just put this in the way for a moment. Let me just spread right, right here. Real quick, that's the official art. That's the official art of Anna and Dan back. Back when he was young, and hence, you know, hence why I believe he's actually, you know, a actual Blackmore, because white hair, even at a young age, that seems to be the one trending trait amongst the Blackmores, and anyone related to them, is that they just have right hair and green eyes. Uh, you get the version of her from last Encore. Let's find it, there we go. Because I got both versions of this. To the side. There you go. So you got this woman who has brown hair, brown eyes, and from what I can I can guess is apparently Japanese because you know he had to freaking get into Japanese dance, liking Japanese dances somehow. And here's one I. C I actually just found this a, c a day ago, and which is kind of what prompted me to actually make this video, I guess. Because... Someone actually went out and made artwork of young Dan and freaking Anna. So, again, this guy, this guy's a boss. I'll, I'll leave a link in the description for, for it, but this guy, this is some awesome, good, some really good artwork. So, um, move this up. Again, I'm sorry for all the, edit, the things happening in this video, but... So, yeah. You got this. You got Anna. Now, here's some things I found about Dan. Dan, according to the wiki, was 60 when he when he basically became a uh, Spiritron hacker. A.K.A. he basically probably went about around the same age, give or take a year, year or two when he basically entered war and basically, you know, ended up dying. So, 60. Meaning he was more, meaning he was born in, born in the 70s, around, so probably around this, a year or maybe early, a bit younger or older than Twice, since we know Twice was born in the 70s and he died in 1999. And now you have his wife. Now, I say, I bring up the, the extra material because Another thing that the wiki seems to not bring up is that the Haku the Hakanos have an official age. Like within the materials they have basically stated to have an official age. Well, at least the age when they, you know, got frozen. They were seventeen. Now, before you go think I'm going somewhere this what I think you're going is no. It just I already I already checked the time just doesn't work. By the time the Hawkinos would be born, Dan, and possibly in it, I'm giving, I'm gonna assume they're about around the same age, would only be 13 by the time the Hawkinos were born. Since they would have them been born in 1983. Then the Fate X universe. So. Because. I think out of all the masters, he's kind of the one that kind of gets into the game, like, the closest to Akino, outside, you know, Ran and Ronnie. 
I guess it's maybe also I was. I don't know. Again, a lot of people as like as like you know parent figure. I guess. I think Anna may or may not be Kishinami, or at least a part of that family or some sort of re relative to them. Because I mean, look, brown hair, brown eyes. Looks kind of like an older Hakuno, female Hakuno, with different hair hairstyle. I'm not gonna say this is mom because, like I said, timeline does just doesn't work. They would only they would both only be like adolescents at most by the time the Hakuno was born. So it's not so not not their parents. But I think Anna was possibly catching up again. I know that sounds like, oh, just because she has, like, brown hair and eyes. I'm like, yes, yes, I know. That sounds really cliche. But why go with that in an... Why go with that kind of style for a woman in a game where you have your protagonist as brown hair and brown brown eyes people? And again, no one else is like this. Like, this is the only other girl that has the kind of style of hair. And, not to mention, when you compare Dan to all the other masters, he's really old. I, again, that's kind of the entire point of him being there, because that way, you know, uh, England didn't have to, like, send any other, any younger soldiers to go and go fighting what, what could possibly be a death sentence. He could at least, you know, go in, and at least he was most, most trusted amongst, you know, like, again, he was signed by the Queen. And so, there's that. But again, the whole thing with this is that I think between her looks and Dan liking Japanese dance, I think Anna is possibly the Hawkeye's aunt. Which would mean Dan is their uncle. Again, I know this is a small stretch. And the material book sadly doesn't give us anything to work with with Anna. So, again, it's basically going off assumptions here. But, Extra Record, bleh, extra record is coming out. So we do have a possible chance that we may end up learning more. Like, again, we might end up learning more about them in that game. I really hope they do expand on the characters. Like, they have... I really do hope. Because it's like 10 years. You've had 10 years to base, take this base to think about stuff. And take this base, this baseline and, you know, do something with it. Like, are you going to confirm that Dan is actually, you know, a part of that Blackmore family? Like, again, we have... We're assuming he is because of what the freaking materials say, but, like I said, we don't really know for certain, but it would make sense. Why else game in Blackmore? Was it just coincidence, or was it, you know, because of that whole thing? Again, I know I'm basically making assumptions here, but I'm going, like, a lot... A lot of this stuff comes off of, you know, there's gotta be a reason why Dan, who is, in, like, I, again, he could just like it for the whole tense purposes, but again, that's really weird for a guy who's been an England soldier, who barely had time to make, barely got to see his wife because of his duty as a soldier for England, for all the wars he had to fight in. He had to get that from somewhere. And I'm willing to bet it's from her. Because, again, just feels like that would be the only place. That's, again, Japanese dance. That feels like the one oddity in all, like, all the other characters. Really oddity in all this. Again, basically I'm such an... But... That's more or less all I gotta say with Dan. I liked him. I really wish he came back for CCC. It's a, it's a real shame we didn't get more of him in CCC. I I know they need they need to you know have room with Stingy, Leo, Joyce, all that other stuff. I get that, but if there was any character 
that could have used more screen time, it was Dan. I wish we got, like, at least some more, like, connection. Again, who knows? Maybe they will do that in the, in the remake for CCC if we do and get that. Or maybe we'll get some time with freaking him in freaking record. I don't know. But I just wish they do they do more with him. I like his character, and I wish we got more of him. But that's more or less all I gotta say. The only other thing I gotta say is, if you have the time, I'm gonna leave a link in the description. description. Go read the, the extra material. It, it basically includes both extra and CCC. has all the basically material stuff in there. Go give it a read, because there is stuff in here that the wick, the people who wrote these Ricky pages, they clearly only, like, read, like, the game stuff. They never actually went into the, the materials, because this, this basically what, you can basically give Dan a lot more than what he has, because, again, kind of a thing I wish... I just, I want to make this more net well known, because clearly it's not, because I feel like some of the stuff that's in here would have been changing, like the fact that Shinji is a design, is in fact a set designer baby, and sorry about that, that's the thing, computer notification, but yeah, uh, basically, it basically confirms, like, the, like, something, Foxtail actually went into this, and that's kind of why I got confused when I first saw it, like, what? When was this ever brought up? It's in the materials book. It was never brought up in the game, but it's in the materials book, and I feel like that probably explains why never, no one ever, you know, found out. Oh, and also, I did, in fact, find that image with that had Shinji with both Violet and Drake. I found it. I feel like I should at least show, show you here. So, give me a sec. Let me upload this image here. Upload onto my freaking thing. Um, here we go. So, as we lay evolve, here's Shinji between Drake and Violet. I gotta say, Man, that that's just that's just good. That's good. I wish this was more widespread. Like someone take this, find this, make a screenshot of this image, make it more wide, like color it and make it more widespread. Cause I mean, this is just nice. This is just nice. But yeah, that's basically it. Hope you guys enjoyed and leave your comments. Like leave your comments and thoughts about Dan, the Black North there, the Blackmore thing, the. Is on a originally a Kishinami theory again? Not really. That wouldn't change that much, but it would be very much a you know a good piece piece to you know give us some info about what Hakino's family were because something again a point to the materials book. Even though the Hakinos were are average mages, they have surprisingly they're basically describing in, in the materials to have. Really good magic circuits, like high quality magic circuits. And the only reason why they're so weak is because they've just been unused for so long. So, again, sounds like the Kishinamis were kind of a mage family. But we just don't know anything about them. And it's kind of like, okay, at some point we gotta learn about these, like, Hakuno's family, right? There's gotta be more to this than just, you know, like, you know. Like, you know, just, you know, they just, they just have good quality, good magic circuit, like, high quality magic circuits, but it's just, like, there's gotta be some more than this, like, there has to be more, there's not, they can't be just, you know, it's just, like, they, we just decided to do this, like, no, there's, there's gotta be something else, come on. But, yeah, that's basically it. A bit long for a video, but, eh. I really want to do a video about these guys, and, yeah. But, yeah, um... Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'm going to leave you off with this magnificent image of young Dan and freaking Anna. Because, my god, if, if if there's any couple that deserves to be a freaking summon as a, as a duo servant, it's these two. Come on, Grand Order. 
freaking bring back Dan and Anna. Bring them back so they can be freaking united. That, I think that'd be a good, that'd be a good, a nice thing to do. But yeah, thank you guys for watching, and see you guys next time for the Alice in Nursery Rhyme video, aka the video where we all cry because Alice's death was freaking sad as frick. Was super freaking sad. And if you didn't cry, then you're probably a psycho. You're probably a sociopath. But yeah. Peace.